If you hope for eternal rest, feel the pain yourself, but don't hurt others. Your hand can seize today, but not tomorrow, and thoughts of your tomorrow are nothing but desire. Hakim Omar Khayyam In this documentary, we are traveling to two Zoroastrian provinces, and together we will look at the ancient rituals and ceremonies of the people of this region. On this trip, we're going to look at the burial customs and some of the places where the people of the Iranian plateau would bid farewell to their loved ones forever. This ancient land was once populated by a people whose burial rituals were unique and, according to many, more in sync with nature. These customs were preserved by Zoroastrians until a hundred years ago but due to the development of cities and modernity and a decrease in wildlife, it was gradually abandoned and ultimately forgotten. In geographic coordinates, 30 degrees, 21 minutes, 48 seconds north, 57 degrees, 4 minutes, 1 second east, just outside the city of Kerman, the building of two crypts can be seen side by side. One is old, and studies show that it dates back to the end of the Sassanid era. The other one is more recent and was built during the Qajar era, roughly in the late 18th or early 19th centuries. What is a crypt? What were the rituals of the ancient Iranians for the dead like? And how did they treat the corpse? To find the answer, we will start our journey and take the group around Kerman province in the southeast of Iran. The crypt, or dakma, was a place where the body was placed to become prey for scavengers. The word dakma refers to the place of cremation. In ancient Iran, it was a common custom to either bury the dead or burn them. It seems that disposing of the dead in dakmas was the custom of the Zoroastrian magi, and after they gained power, they introduced this ritual. The Zoroastrians of Iran call the crypt Dodgah, and the Parsis of India call it Dakmu. This structure is known as the Tower of Silence in Europe. Until recently, the method of building a crypt has been choosing a circle-like spot in the mountains and building a wall with an entrance around it.
The Dakma is normally located at the top of a hill, and as shown in this video, buildings related to religious ceremonies can be seen at the bottom. At the foot of the hill on which the crypt is located, there usually would be a fire temple that had a fire guard. From the time of burying the dead, keeping the fire burning for three days and nights was mandated, and this was the responsibility of that officer. After visiting these two historical crypts, let's join the group heading for the city of Ravar in Kerman to see the second most important crypt in this region. However, before that, I would like to tell a story about the process of disposing of the dead, which was practiced by Zoroastrians of Kerman until about 120 years ago. After someone's death, the relations of the deceased would inform the morticians or Nesasolar. Before the arrival of the Nesasolars, the family covered the face of the dead with a white cloth. After the arrival of the undertakers, the people of the house would leave the room. The deceased would then be bathed and carried to the courtyard of the house, and this bath would be performed with what is called podiab. Currently, the corpse is washed with water. Before we continue with the story, we're approaching a village called Sharifabad. Near this village, another stone crypt can be seen on top of a not so very high hill. This building is located in the following geographic coordinates. 31 degrees, 13 minutes, 29 seconds north, 56 degrees, 49 minutes, 29 seconds east. The construction of the building probably dates back to the Safavid era, and the building is made of stone and mortar. The central well of the crypt is located outside the stone fence. And now let's get on with our story. Morticians were also called Pakshu, and they would enshroud the corpse with a clean white cloth. They would put a mixture of garlic and sadaf in the ears, nose, and mouth of the dead to disinfect the body and prevent stench. Before covering the face of the deceased, morticians would bring trained dogs over the body. The reason for that is that in the past, there were deaths caused by a stroke or a heart attack, after which the individual might have been mistakenly perceived and then pronounced dead. The trained dogs were to avoid such mistakes. This seeing dog ritual then turned into a religious tradition. In ancient religious beliefs, the dog was considered the gatekeeper of the afterlife and inferno. After the ceremony of the seeing dog, the routine of morticians would begin. It is necessary to wash the dead before and after the process. The dead should be rinsed thoroughly so the surface of the body and all the orifices are washed. Prior to the ceremony, they would have already brought a cart called Gehen. Gehen was a flat metal bed on which the body of the deceased would be placed. 
and the Gehen, with the corpse on it, would then be carried off by the relatives on a cart. The morticians and the other people would accompany the procession as well. Before reaching the crypt, there was a building where the dead person's survivors or relatives would stop for a few moments to serve food, such as homemade bread, potatoes, boiled eggs, cheese, onions, and wine. The clergy would then recite hymns from the Yashts. Then they would proceed to the crypt reciting the same hymns. Before we continue with our story, let's leave Kerman province and head for Yazd. After the Sharif Abad or Ravar crypt, the group continues its journey towards Yazd province. In Adakon, Daylan village, and in the geographic coordinates, 32 degrees, 17 minutes, 19 seconds north, 54 degrees, 3 minutes, 14 seconds east, a beautiful building with two crypts can be seen side by side. These crypts and the buildings around them probably date back to the first Pahlavi period. Their construction was done with the help of the Akabar Parsi Association of India. Now more on our story. At 40 paces from the crypt, there would be a stone called the Cursed Stone. There were words written on it warning everyone. All except morticians were cursed if they walked past that stone towards the crypt. The undertakers, who were usually two, carried the body to the crypt. The door of the crypt was locked. They would open the door and go inside and put the cadaver where it needed to be put and return with an empty gehen or metal bed. Then everyone washed at the spring or water stream that flowed at the foot of the crypt and returned to the building they had passed to eat and drink food and wine. Now back to the question, what are dakmas or crypts? The word dakma refers to the place of cremation. In ancient Iran, it was a common practice to either bury the dead or burn them.
The disposing of a body in the Dakma was the custom of the Zoroastrian Magi, as we previously said. But this practice was not commonplace until the Magi gained power. They then introduced this ritual, which according to many scholars, was more on a par with natural ways of things. The crypt or dakma, circular in shape, is built from the interior wall sloping towards the center. A well is built in the center of the crypt so that the rainwater washes the dirt and transfers it through the grooves of the well. This well is called sarode or ostudon. The bones of the dead are thrown into this well after being cleaned of flesh and skin. Outside the wall of the crypt, four other wells, which are deeper than the central well or ostudon, are made in its four corners, and channels from the central well lead to those lower exterior wells. Water and dirt are transferred to these wells, and the bottom is filled with sand one meter deep. The interior of the crypt is divided into three circles, the first circle, which starts from the foot of the wall and is bigger, is where the men's bodies are placed. The second part is for women, and the third one is for children. Every corpse is put in one of the grooves that lead to the center, which then leads to the well. At the end of our trip, the group heads to the city of Taft, near Yazd, to visit another Zoroastrian crypt in the following geographic coordinates. 31 degrees, 46 minutes, 35 seconds north, 54 degrees, 16 minutes, 12 seconds east. Near a village called Cham in Taft, a crypt from the Rajar era can be seen. Remember, a grave is only a curtain for the paradise behind. You'll only see me descending into a grave. Now watch me rise. Or the moon goes down. It looks like the end. It seems like a sunset. But in reality, it is dawn. Rumi. Rumi. 